Hi, I'm Andrea and welcome to Productive C Sharp. In this video, I want to talk about system objects. Every single type in C Sharp is an object. Every single type, either a value type or a reference type, implements from the class system.object. This class is defined in the uh, .NET framework, in .NET Core, and uh, is the base class for every single object. You can even cre create an instance of this class um, directly. Let's say I want to create an object, I can do new object, and this basically creates an instance of an object. An object instance effectively doesn't have any, any direct fields or properties, so it's not very useful. But an object itself um, offers every single uh, class and structs some basic uh, methods. And as you can see, like the equal equals method, get a code, get type, and to string. I talk about the equality methods in a separate video that you can find in this uh, C# -sharp fundamental course. Uh, let me quickly tell about get type and to string. So get type is a method that returns an instance of a type system dot type. So type t equals, and this t effectively um, this one requires a reference to using system. This is defined in the system namespace. And I can actually print t and see what actually is printed. If I run this code, you can see that effectively it's printing system.object. So this object is of type system.object. Type is, is, is basically a class that contains information about a particular type. It's often used uh, in reflection in order to be able to uh, programmatically uh, manipulate an assembly and find types in it and do manipulation of types. So every single object in .NET has supposed the get type property because every single object in .NET implements object. Also, when you do console override line t, automatically the toString method is called and this toString method is effectively defined in, in, the, um, in the object class as well. By default, if you, if you use toString on an object, let's, let's use it on the OBJ directly, by default is effectively printing the name of the type. It's effectively doing the same as what I was doing before, console of right line and, and then printing T directly. You can see there is a name property here, and I can print those two and you will see that they basically are similar. Object, uh, the name property doesn't have a system object, so this will be effectively full name. If I run this, they are effectively the same. Okay, so if you, if you create a class in C Sharp that automatically implements system object, by default, when you try to print this class, you will basically print the type of the class itself. Let's see, let's, let's try to do that. I have a class here, book, that contains a name property, and uh, in, an override the two string methods from object. But hey, you can see that I'm not actually inherited from object directly. So this because automatically every single class in the net implicitly inherit from system object. You can explicitly do that if you want do, by doing that. And you effectively get the same um, result. In fact, if you go on that, you can see that, you know, really you don't really need to do that. You can just remove that automatically. Every class implements object. And when I do override to string, I'm basically saying that I'm changing, um, instead of, I'm changing the implementation of to string. So instead of uh, rely on the base class, please use this method. In fact, if I create a book, and I try to print it, at this point in time, because to string is implemented, uh, you will see that actually, title could complete is printed. But if I remove this method, the code still compile, but now it's printing book. That is effectively the name of the type of the object. Okay, so now you know that object is effectively the base class of every single object in .NET. Object is an alias in C Sharp that effectively means system the object. So this is a effectively equivalent to doing creating a new system object. It's just uh, a shortcut, similar to what the other 
um, value types in C sharp uh, offers an alias like int long they all aliases of int 32 and stuff like that okay now you might be asking when you want to use object directly so and the answer is probably most of the time you don't want to use object the reason why object um, is in the language is because it's a, a way to unify all the types in .NET and also because the first version of C Sharp, uh, C Sharp 1, didn't have uh, generics. Uh, so pretty much all the collection types that at the time were implemented in the framework were accepting the type object. So for example, if you wanted to create a collection of um, in, in C Sharp 1, you had to use like an object like array list. This array list, when you create it, uh, this requires system collection. When you try to add something in this list, you can see that add requires an object. So this means I can add any type I want. I don't really need, there is no kind of any sort of control. You can have a, an, a list of any type in the language and you you are not kind of uh, forced by the compiler to you know to satisfy a particular type for each element and um, c sharp 2 introduced generics that really helped to create strongly typed code and then force a particular type in a collection and honestly there is n almost no reason to use these types anymore so object often uh, need to be used when you interop with some libraries that has been written before C# 2 was created or part of the language that still you know requires object because they were defined before C# 2 like for example events uh, the the events uh, handler signature still um, requires objects or there are other situations like in other frameworks that requires objects like uh, if you want to implement an high value converter in WPF or if you actually want to deal with reflection you still need to use objects so you might find yourself in situations where you need to use the object um, directly object type directly but most of the time you don't need to and you should try to avoid it uh, and the reason is also because when you use uh, objects with value types you might end up in uh, performance problems. And I'm gonna quickly describe um, an example. So if you have, for example, an integer like that, and then you assign this integer to an object, let's say obj equals n, what happens when you do this assignment is effectively um, n is, is um, instantiated inside a stack and when you do this assignment, a copy of n is created into the heap and then object point to this, this, uh, this value. So this operation is called boxing and it's quite a, an expensive operation to do. And then when you actually want to save back the object into um, the, uh, uh, an integer, this operation is called unboxing. So what the framework does is copying the uh, the value from the heap and back into the stack and you need to do an explicit cast because you can't assign an object type directly to a uh, to a value type right while the opposite is, is possible because every object every type is an object okay so while all the time you come you basically pass a value type into an object right you do a boxing operation this is very expensive so, for example, here, when you do a list.add and you pass an object directly, all the time you pass an object here, you do a boxing operation if, if object is a value type. In this case, you don't because this book is a reference type. OBJ, you don't. But if you do list.add3, now you do a boxing operation, right? So, if you use generics, uh, if, you use, if you use generics, this problem goes away. So, if you use a list of t, for example, and you can say, okay, I want to actually create a list of ints, right? So if you do that, so this requires system collection generics. Now, array only su support passing integers directly. So you, you're not allowed to pass OBJ anymore. This will actually get a compiler error because generics enforce the types of the collection for you. You should always use this generic collection 
when it works in C sharp. Okay. The let me think about if there is anything else I want to tell you about uh, object. Uh, so uh, you already seen how you can do casting. Like for example, if I want to, uh, if you want to assign um, uh, a book like into an object, you can do that because automatically there's an implicit conversion between any type that implements object into object. But if you want to do the opposite, assign book to OBJ, you need to do uh, an explicit cast, something like that. So you're saying, okay, compiler, I know that OBJ is of type book, please cast OBJ into a book for, for me, because I know what I'm doing. Uh, if OBJ effectively isn't of the type book, at runtime there will be an invalid cast exception. So if you deal with objects a lot, you will find yourself to do a lot of casting, and that's not really good uh, good code, and that's also why generics really helps you to, uh, to reduce the number of casting necessary in the code you write. Uh, also, another way uh, for kind of checking the type is, in addition to just calling object dot get type and then checking the type, you can use the uh, is something like that. You can do if uh, obj is book, right? You know that this um, object type is actually reference um, is a book and also you can actually use the pattern matching in C sharp 7 to actually get an instance of a book B so that you can actually access for example the property here and print it let's say I want to print it so you can uh, kind of deal safely with objects using pattern matching for example and pattern matching really you know helped uh, to, to reduce the casting directly as you can see all right so this is this is pretty much it. Uh, the reason why I created this book, this uh, this video is because there are um, some uh, inexperienced developers that like never uh, never work with C sharp one. They sometimes come across with a, this object uh, type and they don't really know when they should use it and when not, and they don't know like all the problems, performance problems that they, that might happen when you actually use value types uh, together with objects. So the summary of the book is effectively try to avoid using objects as much as possible. And the latest version of C Sharp offer generics and uh, you should basically use generics uh, uh, when you really need to deal with, uh, with uh, like uh, classes that require some parametric types or you can actually use interfaces and uh, instead of using objects directly. Uh, so that's effectively the, the main summary. So try to, to avoid using objects. Of, of course, sometimes you can't avoid that because they, there are libraries that still require passing objects. But as far as you know uh, what you're doing, that's perfectly fine. And uh, there are other videos that talk about uh, values, how to compare uh, objects, value types and reference types. It's a very important concept to understand. And other videos uh, that talk um, about other aspects of the type system in C Sharp. Thank you very much for watching.